on this day, the 17th of August, way back in 1974, I celebrated, I officiated at the very first wedding as a young priest in St. Clement's Parish in Etobicoke in Ontario. It was the marriage of Terry and Wanda some 30 years ago. The Lord did not tell them what would, how their life would unfold. 30 plus years later, they have four children, one unmarried, and Dr. Terry is an ordained uh, permanent deacon in the Archdiocese of Toronto. Two days ago, we celebrated the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady. When Our Lady said yes at the Annunciation, God did not unfold to her what was going to happen, that a child would be born in a manger, that the child would have to flee into Egypt, that it would be lost at the age of 12, and that her son would die a cruel and terrible death. As you and I unfold our lives, God does not reveal to us what is going to happen, how it is going to unfold. But one thing God does do to us, God sends men and women into our lives. They strengthen us, they comfort us, they console us, they give us courage. They point out the direction in which way we should go. And that is exactly what Ezekiel is doing in the first reading to the king of Tyre. Tyre was a very prosperous and flourishing town on what is on the coast of what is today present-day Lebanon. And the king had done great things. There was wonderful trade. The city had been built up. And he was so successful, and rightly so, he should be proud. But unfortunately, it went to his head, and his head started swelling. And he began to think, well, you know, I'm not just a mortal. I'm God. And at that stage, Ezekiel comes onto the scene. And he warns the king of Tyre. Ironically, he, press, he praises the king of Tyre for being as wise and famous as the prophet Daniel. The prophet Daniel kept the laws of the Lord, kept the tradition even when he was in captivity. And so God gave him skill and understanding and talent in order to know what to do, even to read dreams. And Ezekiel gives the same credibility to the king of Tyre. But this is where Daniel and the king of Tyre split and go in different directions. Daniel realized that all these skills, these talents, this understanding came from God and kept on giving glory to God. The king of Tyre, on the other hand, said, well, it's my intelligence, my knowledge. And as David sang in the responsorial psalm, he did not have understanding at all. Mortals do not have that understanding when they realize that all this comes from God. The point is, this is what Jesus speaks about, about riches. Riches and wealth get to our heads so very easily. Those of you who have seen that musical Fiddler on the Roof, you hear Teviev singing, if I were a rich man. If I were a rich man, people would come from all over because of my fame and my understanding. If I were a rich man, I can say anything. It might be right, it might be wrong, but everybody thinks I know because I have riches. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, said, riches in themselves are neither here nor there. If we use them, if we use them very um, in a balanced manner, they don't harm you, they don't harm me. But that's where the problem lies. We don't possess riches, riches possess us. And that is why Jesus said it is so hard for mortals to enter into the kingdom of heaven when they are rich, or even when they think they are rich. So many of us don't have two nickels to rub against each other, but we act as rich people. We think, okay, I'm going to win this, or I'm going to get a promotion, and we act in such a way. Jesus is asking us to put our trust in God. But unfortunately, in our world, in our society that we live together in it, we are constantly being given the fear that something might happen. And if something is going to happen, then I have to put my trust into my bank account, my credit cards, my balances, the insurance. And Jesus said, for mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things is possible. And if it is all things are possible for God, then 
isn't he the best insurance that we should have, the person in, which, in whom we should trust? You and I know exactly what riches do in our own lives. We have seen people, we become arrogant, we think we know everything. We don't think we have to stand in the line like the common people do. They should stand in a line. I should be given a royal treatment and taken in the front of the line. We get very irritated and insulted if we are searched at airports, if our bags are looked at in cinema houses and theaters. It's for the common folk we speak of. And that is why Jesus said it is so hard for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. Empty yourselves out and leave yourselves to be filled with the riches of God. And just like Ezekiel was sent into the life of the king of Tyre, God sends men and women into our own lives. We have only to look through our history of the saints. We have only to look into a history of the church. We find rich people like Francis of Assisi, Aloysius Gonzaga, Saint Margaret of Hungary, Saint, Saint Margaret of Scotland, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, rich people who realized that that would not satisfy their souls. As the book of Ecclesiastes said only two Sundays ago, vanity of vanities and all is vanity. All these things are going to evaporate, turn into mist and disappear. Let's put our foundations, our hopes, our everything we build on on something that will last and that is in God for whom all things are possible. Trust in God and you and I will be truly blessed. God bless you all. Would you join me now as we pray together? We pray for our church and for our leaders in the church, for our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, for our leaders here in the diocese, the bishops who continue to lead us as they serve the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for our civil leaders as they work towards the voiceless, those on, margins, on the margins of society, those who never can make ends meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who work in our armed forces for peace in the world, especially in Middle East, in Afghanistan, in parts of Africa, for those who have been troubled with the floods and disasters like in Pakistan and China, we pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase of vocations to priestly life, for the blessings of married couples who, especially as they get married during these months of June, July, August, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving God, we thank you for the graces you have given us and for the gift of Jesus in our lives. We make this prayer through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. <laughs> my sisters, my brothers, let us pray that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, make these gifts holy and let our spiritual sacrifice make us an everlasting gift to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through our Lord Jesus Christ. With love we celebrate his death, with living faith we proclaim his resurrection. 
With unwavering hope, we await his return in glory. Now with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as we sing together. <laughs> 